Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Nerf Rider with Jagged Brush Studios. Dustin, not always known as. Glad to see you. Thanks for stopping on by. We have a very special miniature to paint today. His name is Orly. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, but he's a, a turtle character. Let's see if I can get him in focus here. There we go. He's a turtle character from Steamforge Games. This copy that I've got from a, for a customer is missing a finger. I'm not quite sure where that went, but anyways, we have him all ready to go. We're going to get some paint on him and hopefully get him done up tonight. So thanks for joining me. Let's go ahead and get on started. So the customer wants me to go for a pretty standard um, paint job on this guy. Let's see if I can, I need to get the reference photos pulled up. Um, working on it real quick, sorry for my arm taking up the whole, um, the whole <laughs> window there. Just about done. Alrighty. So, this guy looks like a whole lot of fun to paint. Looks like we're going for some blues, some greens, and some bronzes, if that's what I'm seeing right here. Let's see. And some browns. So, we'll get to working on this. And we'll we're going to go ahead and start off with his skin tone, which I'm looking at my paint colors trying to decide which one would be the most appropriate here. Let's see what I've got in the drawer here. I have a Commando Green that I think is going to be our best bet. Yeah, that's what we're going to go for. It's a Commando Green. And then we might highlight back up later with the Witch's Brew. I think that's going to be our combination of greens there. So, paint I've got here, like I said, Army Painter Commando Green. All the paints I'll use in this video are going to be made by Army Painter. Um, not sponsored by them, I just really like their stuff. So, um, that's what we're going to go with. I need to resize this orally window real quick so that I can see things. And my OBS window, sorry. Usually I'm better prepared to this. I do apologize. There we go. I can see everything I need to see now. So first things first, I have not used this color yet, so we've got to give it a good shake. And in order to assist us with that, I'm going to go ahead and pop this, um, pop this lid off. And I don't like getting paint all over myself, so we'll pop this lid off. I'm going to take, I have a few stainless steel ball bearings, drop one in there. You can get these from Army Painter, or you can find other places to source them. Army Painter does sell their own, though. No. Sorry, I got, apparently I put my um, tweezers away with glue on them. If you're watching in the chat, feel free to leave a message. I would love to ch ch excuse me, talk with you while I'm painting. Bear with me. It's been a very long day at work. And my t tongue is not wanting to speak appropriately today. So we're going to give this a good shake for a minute. Take a couple minutes just to shake this up. And then we'll get some of that squeezed out onto my um, squeezed down onto my pad. Uh, wet palette is the word I'm looking for. Still shaking this thing up really want to make sure we get a good paint mix on this one since I've never used it. And I don't know how long it was sitting at the company before I bought it. 
so. Just about done. All right. I think we'll get a good consistency out of that now. Yep. Perfect. All right. On to skin tones for this guy. Get my paint thinned out to the appropriate amount of thinness. So if you're watching with me, like I said, let me know. Thanks for stopping on by. Hope you all are having a good Monday. Hope your, your Monday has gone better than mine so far today. Mine's been pretty long. Worked late. Very busy day at work today. Things are a bit crazy. So. Had a good weekend, though. Went to a Star Wars Legion um, event at ATC. If you've got friends that play, or you yourself play Warhammer, you more than likely have heard of the event. ATC in, um, near the Chattanooga, Tennessee area. Went down there, had a great time at um, the event that was put on there by Diceheads Games. It was a blast. 16 players in the tournament. I went 2-1 and one to take third place. And took my army down and entered it in the painting competition. And won the painting competition. It was I was very humbled to have won that painting competition. I've won it now for two years in a row. And... Um, Got some good feedback on the YouTube channel from people that have been watching it, and just a good time all around. So, thanks for the guys down there that put that on. Sponsored the event, got to see a new Legion player get a painted General Gears to add to his army that he had not had. He was brand new and just had the base box, and I'm not sure, a couple other things here or there. And he was super ecstatic to get that new miniature, so it was awesome. It was his first major event, and I think we may have made a lifelong Legion player. So, me personally, I don't watch Critical Role. I don't follow Critical Role. My customer just has me painting a boatload of these miniatures, and it's they've been fun. Um, from he just got some kind of Kickstarter in, I guess, and I've got like 20 more of these now to paint. So, not, not 20 of this guy, but 20 of these miniatures. So we'll, we'll get to cracking on any of these. I already told him that I'm not going to be able to work on those until after Gen Con, at least. Um, just because my paint schedule is very busy up until Gen Con. Um, I've got a ton of stuff to paint. And not enough time to paint it all in. Because... I'm probably going to have to shoot whatever video for content that I'm going to do for next week. It won't be live, because um, I'm going to have to shoot it this week, because I will be on family vacation next week. But I want to have something to upload for you all. And so I'll probably do a either a technique video or something like that, something short, that you can watch and say, hey, at least I'm keeping up with the page. So um, We'll see. If you have any ideas for things to watch, put them in the comments. Let me know or things for me to, to film a short video on. It'll 10-15 minutes top, something that's easy to edit and get on out there. Um, I have had a lot of people ask me about dry brushing, which I could see how that could be an intimidating topic. It can be scary and difficult for new people to figure out exactly how to dry brush. Um, it's really easy to overload your paint brushes, so maybe that will be the topic. We will see. I'm confident that I can 
put together a video on dry brushing, even though it's not a tech technique I use a whole lot of. All right, just about done with this guy, and I realized I left a gap on his tail on accident, so we're going to go ahead and try to wait for this paint to, to dry, and then we will fill that gap. So, um, what I'm going to fill it with is, I need to grab my product that I use. Um, da -dum -da -dum. Bear with me, I'm finding that product. There we go. So for smaller gaps, I use a product, Liquitex Matte Medium. It works great to fill in little gaps. You may have to put a coat or two, it dries real quick. And it, um, it, it really fills nicely. So we will put a dab of that onto the tail in a couple spots. So give it a good shake, drop a little bit out and really want to fill gaps with it so and like i said it'll shrink as it dries so it may take a, a um one or two applications for that to to really set up in there there's a cup i'm gonna look around for a couple spots that may need it while i'm waiting just to make sure i thought i got them all but maybe not So we're going to go ahead and find what color blue we're going to use for his little outfit in the front. Let's see if I have any blues in my drawer here. Hydra turquoise, I don't think that's the right color. Griffin blue, yep. Another color I've not used yet. So, back to the Tubbo stainless steel ball bearings. Pull this cap off of here. I use the paper towel just so I don't get it all over my hands. Blink. Drop a ball in there. And put the lid back on. And shake, shake, shake. One of the unfortunate side effects of the warstore.com going out of business was that I got a whole bunch of army painter paints for like a buck fifty bottle. And so I've got a lot of colors that I did not get. I started initially with the Army Painter Mega Pack. It was like 50 colors in there. And I was painting for that with that for well over a year. And I've only replaced a few bottles here or there. Namely, washes run out quicker than anything else. And I think I replaced it a skeleton bone in like a braid or so. Um, but then a few of my colors started running out. So I had to replace a few recently, but I got a lot of colors off that sale, probably 20 or so that I didn't previously own, and they've been very helpful. I think this Griffin Blue is going to be the perfect color for his little blue outfit that he's got on. Hopefully that works right. I think we'll be okay. But like I said, really want to make sure it's, it's really shooken up as much as possible. And so I grab it by the lid, shake it that way, grab it by the bottom, shake it that way, tap it on my hand a little bit, turn it over, tap it the other way, give it a good spin, just all kinds of over the place. I need to go ahead and break down and buy a, a paint shaker, but I haven't done that yet. To the Griffin Blue. Make sure it's good and thin to where I want it. And start applying. Yeah, I like this color for what we're using it for. With a nice blue wash, it'll look great. So, that's something, like I said, I mentioned in other videos, you have to keep in mind what your color is going to look like after you apply your wash if you're going to apply washes because it will look different. So while this color may look light right now, 
or a little bit light, if I could get it on camera. Um, after I apply my wash, it's going to really darken up that blue and make it look right in the color of denim, which is almost what this color is we're going for. I don't try to copy other people's work, but I'll definitely use it as color inspiration if the customer wants me to use it. So. He wanted this one to look similar to that one. Shep, I did say critical roll. I'm finally breaking down and painting your oily. I think I'm pronouncing it right. I don't know. Oh, really? I'm not sure. This guy's got so many little things that stick out, he's hard to get to everywhere. I probably just should have kept his sword off until the end. And I probably should wait for this green to dry a little bit more before I try to put too much more blue on there. So. Oh, no problem, man. Glad you could stop by and watch me paint some of this miniature. All right, for his shell, we're gonna go with, I think we're gonna end up going with this dark stone color. Army painter dark stone. to get up in the morning too, but I'm going to be painting this guy until I finish him. with the missing finger. Just blocking in colors here. Right now we're not trying to be super neat because anything that we haven't painted yet we'll cover back up with other paint once we get to that part. No, I'm on Easter time, ship. I just don't sleep, like ever.
No, the, the middle part of Tennessee is in Central. I am not in the middle part. The eastern part of Tennessee is in Eastern Time. And Eastern Tennessee about as, is about as far as I am willing to divulge where I live. Outside of my customers, of course, they know where I'm at because they've mailed me stuff. to this gap on the tail. Yeah, you have mailed me quite a few things. One of my longest time customers. on these, these uh, bagpipe things here while other things are drying. So um, they look like a, a dirty gold almost in the picture. So I want to do something a little bit different here. Let's see. We're going to take greedy gold. Give it a good shake. You really want to make sure you get these metallics mixed up well. And we're going to put it on our palette. And I'm going to mix it just a little bit in with some gunmetal. And it will really give it a dulled down shine, I'm hoping. We'll see how it looks on the palette before I do it. This is an experiment here. That's the color I was going for. So let's pull over a little bit more so I have some more in there. Like a worn gold color. Yeah, I know, right? Um, especially if clones are released at Gen Con, which I'm pretty confident they will be, but I'm not sure if Legion clones will be released. Or, you know, the Clone Wars stuff. I'm um, hoping it is. Because I'm excited for it. So what I've done here is I've taken Army Painter Greedy Gold and Army Painter Gunmetal and mixed it together. I guess roughly in like a 2 to 1 um, gunmetal to Greedy Gold mixture. And what it's really done has given us a very beautiful, almost patinaed gold color. And I really like it, so. And is exactly what I was going for on this. And we'll dirty it up and it'll look great when it's done. My um, paint schedule's not thinking it's awesome if they get released, but the Star Wars nerd in me is thinking it's going to be awesome if they get released.
Hey Dan, how's it going? Glad to see you. Get back on stream here for a second. Even with my little blue box of paint in this box down, I regularly don't pay attention to that. Alright, I'm giving paint a second to dry real quick. Because things are starting to try to run together. is helping, right? Sarcasm. Completely intended. Thanks for that. What would I do without my friends? With friends like y'all who needs enemies. See if I can't touch up some of this green. A couple areas that it went over. The help tape helps when I pay attention to it instead of getting so focused in on painting. actually think I was a good painter. Because <laughs> taking first and second in the same paint topic competition wasn't enough. <laughs> After this, I need to knock out some more of those dungeon doggies, so those will probably be next. And then I'll have a bunch of Legion models I've got to paint. Um, I still have to paint my contracted models to get my Gen Con tickets, so those will probably be after the dungeon doggies. I've still got to paint some tanks for Shep here. Those will be soon. I still have a boatload of stuff to paint for Dan in the chat. Um, I'm glad that my paint schedule isn't busy at all. But it gives me plenty of stuff to put up for content for y'all. I'm so glad to see that you guys are enjoying the channel. It seems to be taking off real nicely. I jokingly told my boss today, maybe I'll make this a full-time gig. Let me clarify, that will never happen. Mostly because... I don't want to paint full-time. But it was a joke. After a rough day at work. <laughs> it 
Samurai Vader, that's coming up. That's going to be well after Gen Con, though. Um, it's going to have to be. I've got... I ended up walking away with two of those for me, and one for price support. <sighs> yeah. I also have to build a, a very large wooden World War II building for a customer. Um, it's like an MDF World War II building. I'm not sure if I'll be able to stream any of that. Just due to the size of the model, it's huge. Um, I'm not even quite sure it's going to fit on my desk. I haven't planned that far ahead yet. But I'm really excited to work on that a bit. Um, I don't, I've, I've got more stuff up here to paint than I can shake a stick at right now. Um, If you look at the top shelf above my of my desk, it's all just stuff to paint. And then I have boxes in my other storage room that is stuff to paint. And then I have board games of my own that is stuff to paint. Legion models of my own that is more to paint. It's we just have a lot on my paint palette here. I just realized I painted part of his shell the wrong color. So, we need to find what color we're going to paint that. And that's probably going to be... Thanks, Dan. Have a good night. I think we're going to go with... No, I don't like that color for it. Not at all. Cool. What if we go with our sulfide ochre that we've been using a lot? I think that's it. Used a lot of that on the Bosk miniatures. If you haven't watched that video, go catch it. Um, seems to be a very popular one. We're going to use this for the underside of his shell. Because, like I said, I don't copy paint jobs exactly. I try to get them close. I'm fired. Well, that being said, I guess we'll stop then. For the rope, we're going to go with Army Painter Skeleton Bone. So for my leathers, on here I'm going to use Army Painter Leather Brown. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to base it in Oak Brown. And then we'll highlight to, up to Leather Brown later. Really give some of those leathers a real contrast. So lots of very earthy tones on this guy. Browns, greens, things like that. So he's got a money satchel here, or a satchel of some sort. I'm not sure if it's money or what. We 
got a couple codes on there, and then he's got his little bagpipe thing on the other side. I'm not sure what it is. Looks like a bagpipe, or a hookah, or something, I don't know. Oh, great. August 8th, you mean? Who's that release date according to? Amazon? Because they're accurate. That was pure sarcasm, if you couldn't understand that. I haven't even ordered those for myself yet, Shep. Ooh, it's a face. I gotcha. August 1. Uh, well, I'll be at Gen Con August 1st. So I guess I'm not painting those on release day. Not that I paint on release day anyways. got too much stuff to keep up with. Someone needs to tell FFG to slow down. Because this guy can't keep up. We're doing some gunmetal onto this little belt buckle here. We also use that on his sword. I think I forgot to mention that. Sure thing, Shep. I'll let you know. I'll probably have to order it for you and Dan as well. So we will put in. I'll put in a bulk order. Um, I'm probably going to switch from ordering from Miniature Market to Cool Stuff Inc. Though, because of the fiasco with getting my Miniature Market order last time. And then after waiting a week and a half to get my pre-release shipped. They told me, oh, here's $5. Enjoy. Thanks, guys. Great customer service. It is. It's real fast, especially when I'm trying to keep up with painting. Like, And then we have a whole new set of miniatures coming out for the game, which I'm super excited about, but um, I just I need a need a minute. Especially since I've got vacation coming up next week, so I can't paint next week. Um, thanks, Emma. Is that like, thanks, Obama? Whatever that was for a while. Can that be a new thing? Thanks, M.M. We're putting some of that um, oak brown on the handle. Yeah, in case you guys didn't see, Shep has mentioned he's got critical role models a couple times. <laughs> I've got a bunch of them. <laughs> no, I don't mind painting these guys, though. They're... They're fun little distractions from all the assembly line painting that Legion becomes. Me? Um, just one, of course, if FFG is listening. Just one. Every day. Now, realistically, I'll probably get two. Um, I contemplated three because of battle droids. Um, 
Oh man, I don't even remember how many critical role models it is total. It's a lot. It is quite a lot. Um, I would like to get two, at least. I'd like to walk out of there with two and maybe a box of... Um, a box of... See you later, Dan. Um, uh, Battle droids. I don't know. It depends. It, it really depends. It also depends on how much money I have. I'm, I'm earmarking money for two. And then I'm just letting things dry for a minute. Here's where we're at so far. Um... It also depends on what kind of board games I see there that I want. I know the Kingdom Death monster booth is calling my name heavily, and their miniatures aren't cheap. Like, there's a couple expansions I don't have for Wave 1 yet that I'd like to see about picking up there. Um, but if I were to buy all of them there, that's like another 300 bucks that I just, I honestly don't have right now. So, um, we'll have to see. Yeah, he's getting there. We're mostly base coded, actually, almost. Um, there's a couple things I need to touch up. I need to. I'm waiting for the blue to dry on that shell part that I said I accidentally painted blue instead of yellow, and then we'll get that fixed. Um, and then that's most of the base coating. We'll do some touch up, like how I just splotched yellow everywhere. Wonderful. But yeah, so if I were to buy all the Kingdom Death stuff that I need that is game content that I don't have, that's like 300 bucks. Um, then when you add on Corset, yeah, I, I should have waited. Um, that's going to require quite a bit of touch up there. And then when you add on the Corsets for the new factions for Legion, like I could easily walk out of there paying 600 bucks or so now. That's not going to happen. So I'm going to have to play some very money wising. Plus, there's other stuff I want to get there. Um, I am picking up one of my Kickstarters there, so I don't have to pay for that. It's free. Um, the Cloudspire Kickstarter from um, Chip Theory Games, who makes Too Many Bones. I love Too Many Bones. I have that game. And so Cloudspire looked like an amazing little fun game that they're putting out. And I went in. Snagged it on Kickstarter, and I think they just announced that it's very likely we'll be able to pick up at Gen Con. So, they sent out a survey saying if you'd like to pick up a Gen Con, please fill out the survey, and I filled it up. Um, and like I said, it's not 100% concerned, but there's a good chance I will be helping out at the Pandasaurus Games booth for a little while. If you are at Gen Con and want to stop on by on Saturday afternoon, I need to get back in touch with that guy and confirm. But... Um, very likely that I'll be helping out with them. Ask him. Email him and ask him if you can um, switch it, and I'll see if I can't swing by Steamforge Games and pick it up for you. I bet you they'd let you. They're pretty good about that. Sounds good. Yeah, let, let me know. Alright, so we're going to paint these little rings on this tuba-looking thingy, whatever it is, brown. But we're going to go for a thin brown so that metallics poke through in some areas. So it looks like it's the paint's been painted on and a little bit worn off.
If you're just joining the stream, thanks for watching. If you're watching this recorded, appreciate you spending some time with me while I paint. I know there's a lot of things on YouTube you could be watching, and I don't have to be one of them. But I hope you're enjoying everything. Leave me a comment in the messages. Yeah, the built-in bagpipes, that's what they are. Um, leave me a comment in the chat. I would love to talk with you. Still waiting on that chest piece to dry so I can put another coat on it. Just trying to clean up some areas while we're waiting on that. For some reason there's like one spot that my primer didn't appear to cover very well and the paint's not wanting to stick there. But we'll get it enough layers and it will it will work I had a brief scare for a minute for about five or ten minutes I was looking all over my paint room and I could not find the base for me for the life of me for this guy I'd, I had taken it and put it somewhere quote unquote safe, you know, oh, I know we'll all find this later, and I couldn't find it. I had put it inside the container for my stainless steel ball bearings, so I was like, well, I'll find it afterwards. I finally did find it. Um, I knew it was here somewhere, I just couldn't remember what container I put it in. You know how that works. So I'll put it somewhere safe, and I'll never lose it. And then, you can't remember where safe is. So, some skeleton bone for the little toenails that he's got, and fingernails. I really like using this for a nail color on monsters or creatures, because when you wash it, it washes up nice and bone-like. Minus his missing finger. So this uh, Orly has seen some battle damage. I mean, I found it. It was not where I expected it to be, but I found it. Does he have an eye patch? He sure does. So we'll get some leather brown on that. Is he really missing a finger in story? Oh, gotcha. Okay, well. I was like, that'd be awesome if he was really missing a finger in, in battle. Or in story.
gonna grab just the smallest amount of necrom necromancer cloak. We're not gonna put a whole lot of black on this guy, but there's one spot I want to be black, and that's uh, there's a little leather attachment piece here that I want to be black. Well, who knows? Maybe a uh, critical role will see this and decide to make him fingerless. If you decide to do that, uh, critical role, my name is Jagged Brush Studios. Okay, right there. It's, it's, well, maybe we'll get it. It's right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One more coat onto this metallic bagpipe thing, just on the tops, and around the rib a little bit. Shep, catch you later, man. I will send you pictures as soon as I finish them up tonight. Thanks for stopping on by. Last time I tweeted out um, the stuff I finished to theirs, I, they never, I had never gotten a feedback, so I didn't do that again. We're just doing some final touch-ups on Orly, or really, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. The turtle from Critical Role, in case you haven't seen the title. Um, we are waiting for some colors to dry because I accidentally painted over the wrong color with something. A wrong section with the wrong color. And we're waiting for it to dry enough for me to paint over it with the new color. And it's taking longer to dry than I would like for some reason. Not sure why. So, this little turtle shell interior, I'm not sure what's going on there. But, alright. A little bit extra coat of metallics on this backside here. And get some brown around the base of it. And last but not least, some pure gun metal for this ring on his back. And then I'm gonna take my super fine brush gonna get the tip of it and on this bag we're gonna draw in the little strings that's holding it closed. Nothing super fancy right now because when I come back in we'll touch these up later so I just need to add the color for later. And then for the rings here He's got rings around the rope into his shell. I'm going to go with pure gray gold. I know that's not what the reference picture looks like, but that's what I feel needs to happen. And I think I'll probably go over this with gold again, this gold ring, just because I don't like the way the silver looks doesn't contrast well enough against the shell, so gritty gold it is. There we go. Much better. So, I'll let him sit for just a minute while he dries. I'll, I'm not going anywhere, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna be painting for a second while I let him dry up a little bit. And up into there. And get in here. Okay. 
here's where we're at. Just about base done base coating everything. I'm gonna set him down while he dries for a minute. And check in a couple things. Let me know how your night is going. Just waiting for paint to dry. It's a whole lot of fun waiting for paint to dry. I am still here. Waiting for paint to dry. Listening to some chip tunes, I guess you would call it. thing against so, something. Facebook is doing goofy stuff. I'm trying to get some posts shared around and it won't let me do it. Facebook's been acting up lately, which is part of why I've completely switched to streaming via the YouTube platform. Um, just because Facebook is they're uh, special sometimes. So let's see if I can get some more yellow to stick on this before we call him base coated and let washes take care of some of the other areas that. Last thing I need to do is touch up just a couple of blue areas, add in some of the spot like metallics, and we will be done. So back into our Griffin blue here. We're gonna grab and go away over something. At some point you have to learn to just be happy with where you're at as far as paint and just just stop. Just just stop sometimes because you end up doing what I just did and painting a whole bunch of blue right into your gunmetal. So 
I didn't show it on camera. Armor Painter gun metal. Time to fix my derp. And if it's got a little bit of blue in that gunmetal from trying to like wet blend over it, don't worry about it because it'll make it look like it's OSL reflecting some of the blue color from the cloak around him. Little tricks. Or it'll look like crap and you can clean it up later. One of the two. Uh, whatever you think looks best. All right. So let's talk about washes for this guy. We're going to use a green wash, or a, a military shader, I mean, for his skin. It's called military shader. It's a greenish brown. I don't want to go with a pure green because I don't like pure green wash very often. I like the military shader for greens. Um, I'm just hitting a couple areas I missed here, and I just like the way it looks versus the, the pure green. So we're going to go with military shader as our wash for the um, skin and we'll see what else could use the military shader. Right now I'm just touching up what I think are metallic buttons. Looking for any last minute areas that I think I may have missed. All right, so the only thing I'm gonna do now is much like the stitching on the bag on the other side, we're gonna hit the stitching on this bag pipe because it just looks plain without it. And make a derpy mistake again. Good job, Dustin. I've got a, quite a bit of touch-up to do. I should have left things well enough alone. You know that trick I gave you about just leaving stuff alone sometimes? Probably should have taken my own advice. I'm great at giving advice. I am terrible at following it. So, do with my advice what you will. I will gladly refund you what you paid for it. If you're not happy with it. Oh, good lord. I'm gonna put him down before I mess anything else up. He's, he's done, he is base coated. We are going with this. Here is our base coated Orly. So what I'm gonna do now is wait for him to dry again. It shouldn't take long. I'm gonna put him down in front of my fan, down on the floor, and I'll show you some other projects that I've got coming up soon. So I had mentioned some dungeon doggies. Let's get those little pups picked up here. I'll show you some of those miniatures that I've got to finish. So I've got I think this is supposed to be a Rottweiler. I'm not 100% sure it's on the box, but um, it would have if I had to No, it's not a Rottweiler. A mastiff of some sort, maybe. Anyways, we've got that left. This looks like a husky. Um, knight of some sort. So we got that left. We have some other kind of dog. Anyways, it looks like a rogue thief of some sort. Maybe a... Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, druid. Uh, this looks like maybe a beagle. And he looks like a warrior of some sort. I have the box behind me. I could look exactly at what these are. So, let's confirm. Maybe. Let's confirm what we're looking at here. Alright, so. Starting here, we have the Mastiff. He's a bard. 
We have Cassandra the Husky Paladin. We have Flint the Blue Heel Ranger. Okay. Freya the German Shepherd Druid. Circe the Saint Bernard Cleric. And Svetlana the Beagle Barbarian. That's what we're going to work on next project um, after finishing these guys. So, And then I'll get that mailed off to the customer. And he has been super pleased with what we've been doing so far. Um, I'm really happy with them. I've had a ton of fun painting them. Looking forward to the, the, the cat version coming out eventually. And he's already pretty much warned me that I'm getting those ones as well. So, small spot of blue in a pl place that I don't want it. Or yellow, I mean, in a place where I want it to be blue. And it kind of stood out like a sore thumb to me. So, we're going to cover up my wet palette here. Give this just another minute to dry. Um, I've been teasing this one for a little while. We have a... I don't know if I'll get to this before Gen Con, but we have a Star Wars Legion. It is a um, Starkiller miniature. That's for Dan Wolf that he wants painted. Um, we have a Celebration Darth Vader model. I am really super excited to paint another one. I've painted one already. I'm sending that one off to Shep here because he sent me two, one for me and one for him. And so I'm sending him the first one I've ever painted and I'm going to redo the second one so it matches my basing just a little bit better. Um, the first one I'm not unhappy with. I'm super happy with the way he turned out. If you go on my Facebook page at Jagged Brush Studios, right there, find that same thing on YouTube or on Facebook, you'll be able to see, if you go to Facebook, you'll see, be able to see the pictures of, um, right there, right there, right there, right there. Um, you'll be able to see the pictures of the Darth Vader that's on there. So, as along, along with a whole bunch of other stuff that I've done on there, I've done a I've done a lot of different types of miniatures. I've got some Gasland conversions on there. I've got more of those here that need to be done eventually that I need to paint. Um, that I've I've done the cars up. I've primed them. The wheels don't spin anymore. I just need to literally break down and paint them. Um, one of my favorite ones that I've done recently um, that I've built up is this little coupe here. Um, Got some armor plating, roll cage that I added, um, some some engine vent covers here, a cattle guard thing up front, a couple roll bars on the back. So excited to get this one painted up, scuffed up the the rear end a little bit, um, and um, there's another one that I wanted to paint up soon. Looking in here for it real quick. There it is. It's a tractor trailer rig that looks like it's going to be a ton of fun to paint. So it doesn't roll anymore. Wheels don't roll. Well, that one does, but most of them are stopped. It's got some chainsaws on the front, and it's going to be a war rig. I'll be at a small war rig, but a war rig nonetheless. So got some just random. I put a lot of 40k bits on there. It's kind of the nice thing about um, gas lands is you can just do whatever you want to. So we'll get some of those painted up. Probably stream some of that. I know there's not a whole lot of gas land streaming paint jobs on there, so we'll get some of that done. I have one that's a work in progress that's been partially painted. Um, went for a purple on this one with a 50 cal mount. Nice diamond plate. Different things. Um, this was some kind of 40k piece. I don't remember what it was. A little Made a little scoop on the front. Um, Super simple conversion right there. Love gas lands. Um, anyways, let's check in our Orly, shall we? He's looking like he's pretty much ready to get a wash. He needs a bath. So let's get my wash palette out here. Find my military shader. Green tone. Military shader. It's one of my favorite washes out of the non-black strong you know, uh, that line. Military shader into a paint well. Get my wash brush that I use. It's usually a pretty, kind of a worn out brush that, and we're going to put this on all the green areas. And 
and it's really going to deepen that green and make it look wonderful. And if some of it carries over into areas that aren't too green, don't worry about it. We can clean that up with highlighting and washing in later stages. So just focus on getting it where you want it to flow. I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate you making my Facebook page your place to find information on your painting needs. Um, you guys have been blowing up in the first week that I've been active. Granted, the channel's been around since September 2018, but it's, it was made with the future intent of making miniatures, and I just wanted to lock down the Jagged Brush Studio name at the time. So, I never intended on streaming when I first started. Well, I mean, I, I intended on streaming eventually, I just didn't want to stream right away. And then, I've actively been posting for about a week now, and you all have been nothing but amazing to me. And I sincerely am grateful for that. Y'all are great. So... I've had a great time streaming with you so far, and I'm looking forward to what the future holds for us here at Jagged Brush Studios. That being said, I still need your help. If you'd like to help us out, the best way to do so is to subscribe to the channel. That way you can get notifications when all of our stuff goes live. Go on and watch some of those videos that you haven't watched yet. Hit the like button if you like the video. All of those things help me out greatly. I'm not making anything off of this right now other than what I'm getting for doing these commission jobs from people. And that's not necessarily my long-term goal, is to help y'all. But if I could get there, it'd be wonderful. So, all right. We're going to go with a blue tone for the blues, but I don't want to go there just yet. I want to let that green tone dry real quick before I go in there. Um, oh, we're also going to do the military shader on the green shell in here. And really drop some of that color in there. So that was the intent all along. I just forgot. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. Anyways, like and subscribe goes a long way for me, helps me out. I, um, like I was saying, I, I make nothing off doing this, I just get have the fun of getting to talk to y'all and do stuff like that, um, and inter interact with y'all while we're painting. Army Painter Strong Tone is what we're going to use on the shelf, and um, that gold bagpipe thing and the leather. Um, so it's, it's really just the fun of doing it, for now. We're also going to use this on pretty much everything except the blue areas is going to get this strong tone wash. It's really going to darken up some of those colors that we're working with here. I know, washing is cheating. It's a good skill. So what? Use it. It's a tool in your toolbox along with everything else. I have done models without washing. It is possible. I am capable of doing it. But when I'm going for the level of quality that I'm going for here that's not award-winning paintbrushing, washes can be a wonderful tool to help you reach that level if they're used appropriately. So don't be afraid to use them. I've heard people say, oh, you rely on your washes too much. Yep, you're right, I do. Doesn't mean I have to. I can use other tools. I just choose to. nothing wrong with that. You paint however you are happy painting. You'll hear me say that every video. You paint to the level that you are satisfied with. I am satisfied with my washes. My customers are satisfied with me using washes.
Last but not least is our, well, second to last but not least, Army Painter Blue Tone. The cool thing about these Army Painter Tones is you can actually paint a model from start to finish with them. And they will act very similarly to contrast paints, it just takes maybe an extra layer. So whereas you'd have to put one on contrast, you may have to put two. But here's what that blue tone does versus the blue wash. It really, I love this blue tone on blue paints. You really want to go for a cool purple on something you're painting? Slap some of this blue tone on there. It really darkens it up. Just like if you want to go for a, a warmer purple that you're painting, slap some of the, the red tones on there. These tones are great tools for your toolbox. Use them. Again, if it's out there and it's available, it's not cheating. Just use it. Enjoy it. Take advantage of those tools you've got. They make your job easier. I get nothing for shilling them. If I ever do get sponsored by Army Painter, I will let you guys know. But for now, all I get is a the warmth of knowing that you guys are using something that a product that I actually enjoy. All right, last one is going to be just a dot, dot of dark tone, and we're going to hit some of these silver metallic areas that we use the gunmetal stuff. So we're going to go onto the blade of the sword here, really dull it down just a little bit. Um, and into this buckle thing, and then onto his little bagpipe hookah looking wand. I don't know what to call that thing. And then on the, all of the fingernails, we're going to take some of our dark or strong tone, and we're going to go hit those nails. That way we can highlight them back up again later. As well as across the feet. Across the feet, across this hand, all right, here's where we're at post wash, and if things didn't darken up the way you wanted it to, you can go back over with one more wash on some of the areas, so like some of the skin wasn't as dark as I wanted it to, so we're going to go hit it one more time. may go into just a touch of the dark tone and touch it too, now that I've got the military shader on there. Yep. Touch of the dark tone really makes it pop out a little bit more. So we're just grabbing a little bit of dark tone and going back over some of these wet areas and letting it wash into the recesses so that it really pops. I think you'll you'll like the difference. Take some of it off the top of his head because it's the top of his head. dry for a few. I'm going to turn the stream onto a be right back. I need to use the, use the facilities, get something to drink, and we will return in just a little bit.
raps down. Thought the label was folded when rhyme stepped down. My rap style's complicated as theories from Pascal. I gained ground like Marshawn all ass down. Your ambiguity's the reason you can't get with me. I linguistically alter all imagery. This is far from the standard. I'm awkward with stanzas. You might try to charge me with slander. Answer, I'm always correct. I'm running things a new man like I got a hundred rings. Imposter? Nope, I ain't him. Avoid the state pen. Control the machines. Hank Pym. Ultron, I'm so bomb. None can hold mine. Dragon beats over the goal line. All of my material, the truth. But trying to follow random is a trivial pursuit. Known to start fires when I get up in the booth. And the fact that I'm living is the proof. Vindicate me. Mega Ran, Renegade, MC. Big giant circles. Yeah, you know what it be. Not guilty. Y'all got to feel me. Squeaky clean, really. Still, I feel filthy. Stop and listen. I give you my composition. Running big giant circles around the competition. Not guilty. Y'all got to feel me. Squeaky clean, really. Still, I feel filthy. Stop and listen. I give you my composition. Running big giant circles around the competition. Not guilty. Y'all got to feel me. Squeaky clean, really. Still, I feel filthy. Stop and listen. I give you my composition. Running big giant circles around the competition. Not guilty. Y'all got to All right, everyone. We are back. We start. We've got Orly here. He is still drying up. I'm going to stick him in front of the fan. See if we can get him to dry a little bit quicker here. And. I'll show you something else I did while we were gone. I simply slapped some black paint right onto this little uh, base here. We're going to put a second coat on there. Nothing super fancy. That's all that we've been doing for these critical roll miniatures I've been doing for the guy. So, touch it down with the old end of a paintbrush. 
and just going with a pure black here. Nothing, nothing too difficult. Thin it down a little bit and paint it black. Ta da! marks here so it doesn't distract from the camera. What you see I have down is an actual cutting map. What you can't see are the lines because I have spray painted over or uh, I rushed over it so many times that the lines aren't gone. I need to or the lines are gone. I need to clean it off. Um, but I'm not in a hurry to do that right now. Or at all. Quite frankly. Um, I would need to throw some paint stripping stuff on there and really get it to clean up real nice. So that little bit of blue that you see right up here is I have put a little box around my painting area that hopefully helps delineate where my stream area is, but it does appear that my line is not as straight as it could be. So let's take an opportunity to fix that a little bit on camera while we're waiting for paint to dry. I know, it's boring. One of, my, one of my buddies this weekend while I was out with them playing at the Legion tournament pointed out that people are literally watching me watching paint dry on my stream. And I thought it was kind of humorous. So. Alright. This music needs to change. Welcome back to the stream if you are just catching up with me again. Appreciate you joining. We are just waiting for Orly to finish drying. And then we are going to start highlighting stuff up. And we're going to start on some of the skin tone with a Witch's Brew. I have not used this paint, so much like the other ones, if you've been watching for a little bit, we're going to open this up. And try to get the lid off. And we're going to drop... Uh, another stainless steel BB in there. I need to get some more of these things soon because I'm running out. That's all I got left. And I've got more bottles of that in my than my, excuse me more bottles than that left in my drawer. So let's give this some good shaking while we're waiting. I also need to print, get my 3D printer back up and running. It's working, but. I, for the life of me, can't get anything to stick to my print bed right now, and I don't know what the deal is with that. So, um, I need to print some more paint racks. But, like I said, I can't get my 3D printer to work right now, and it's bumming me out. Just shake and paint. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake that paint bottle. Shake that paint bottle. Still shaking it up. You can hear that ball in there. shaking. Let's see what Orly looks like, how he's drying up for us. We are getting there. It's just some of the heavier wash areas are still wet, so um, we could probably start working on some things. So we're going to take our little wash palette. We're going to set it aside. We will pop open our wet palette. And... 
let it fall on the floor apparently. Step one, let's highlight some nails because they're dry. So when you're highlighting, I tend to use a little bit thinner paint than when initial, because you can always add another layer to highlight, but it's really hard to unhighlight something. So you'll see me do most of my work with this really fine tip brush when it comes to highlighting. I just find it works best for me. Some people use it too. I, as you've heard of if you watch my videos, I shake too much. Just a bit shaky for a two. over some of these areas one more time with some more of the skeleton bone. Alright, the other area that we're going to go over skeleton bone with is on the rope on the back. And we're going to hit the tops of each of these little rope knot things. Try to be real careful that you don't get anything down into the cracks or else you'll lose the effect of the highlight. And we'll let that dry. And you can already kind of see maybe how the effect works. Once it dries we'll go one more time with it. We're going to take some of that same thing and we're just going to hit highlight some of these little stitch marks. Doesn't take much. And it's really starting to make things pop a little bit. Same thing over on this side. And we're not going to hit every single one of the stitch marks because it would make it look kind of weirdly washed out. So, um, all right. Next, we're going to work on this bagpipe here. So, for that, like I said, we're going to need. Army Painter Leather Brown. We're going to put it on our palette next to... I'm going to shake some of it out. We're going to put it on our palette next to our Oak Brown. And we're going to take some of our... We're going to do about a 50-50 blend of the Oak Brown with the Leather Brown. And that's going to be our first highlight color. We're going to hit just some of these real areas that stick out some. We want to leave some of those dark tones in the recesses. You don't want to cover all the browns that you're working with here. They're really pretty rich browns. As I realized I actually completely missed painting some stitching on the inside, so we're just going to touch that real quick. It's not a big deal that we missed it on the base coating stage, because you can really make it look good right now. So, Alright, and then our next step, we're just going to go into some pure leather brown again. We're not doing golden name of work, otherwise I would probably do six or seven different layers of highlight. We're not doing that equivalent right now. Um, I believe I have the capability to do so, but that's not what this miniature is for. So we're going to hit just some of the highest highlights here, just two little areas. And then on the front side, there's one spot that I think needs to have this light highlight. So, Alright, 
and then we're going to come back over with our 50-50 blend on this bag on the other side. And we're going to, remember this is round, so there's a ridge that runs right there. And then we're going to go hit the tops of the round area with this. On both sides. But leave some of that deep color right next to the the um, stitching because it'll give you some good contrast there. And then into our pure leather brown color and we're gonna hit just some of the top highlights. And I'm still doing that why it's a little bit wet so that I can blend them together just a touch as I'm painting. So it's not as stark of a, a contrast there. I don't know if it's coming across, but yeah. All right, we're going to go back into our bone color, and we're going to give another once over on the the rope on the same highlight areas. Just highlighting that rope. Okay. We're going to come around to the front. We're going to highlight some of our metallics up. So the top of the sword, we're going to go with pure gunmetal. And then same thing here on this little brooch that he's wearing. Just the tops. And then onto his bagpipe thing, pick out some of the metallics, and just highlight some of the different areas. And then the buttons. Alright. And then for our highlight color on the pants and stuff, we're going to go with electric blue. I already have some on my palette though, and we're gonna just do some edge highlighting with it. So, water it down. And it's gonna almost be... a really bright highlight that we're going for. We're going for a little bit different highlighting style on this guy because I want to really make him stand out with contrast. And just pick out your highlights as you're going. You can do as many or as little as you like. But really take your time and look at color theory and see what where would light hit? If this model were standing, where do you want the light to look like it's coming from? Take your time, try to figure that out. Really, really try hard to think of like color theory and light theory and light projection and things like that because it's going to help you paint. If you need to get yourself a color wheel, they can be hugely helpful. Um, I don't use one personally, but i have for the most part able to figure out what colors are good and complementary colors and things like that. So um, here's where we're at. That side blue versus that side blue. just thin my paints as I go. So I'll probably do a video on how I do this. 
I may even pull down this video and kind of use this as a demonstration because I'm really happy with how this is turning out. And don't be afraid to experiment with it. The absolute worst thing that happens is you have to you strip your miniature and you start over. And you know what? That's great practice. I have stripped many a miniature to repaint. go back in there get the flood the area with water take a clean brush and wipe off your mistakes if you make them and then let the area dry so again if you catch acrylic mistakes fast enough I've said this in other streams you can fix them before they come a problem you just have to wait for that area to dry before you start working on it again Some of these blue areas I'm using paint just a little bit thicker than normal because I'm really wanting to give it some texture. So it's almost like I'm doing a combination dry brush with this brush. Here's where we're at so far. All right, onto our witch's brew. And we're probably gonna actually thin this down with a 50-50. With the um, commando green that we were using. that which is green is just a little bit strong for what I'm wanting to do here so mix it 50 50 and that'll give you a good color tone to start with we're gonna start picking out different raised areas here Another tip for if you shake a lot like I do, or if you think you shake a lot, is to brace your arms onto your desk. So I've got my elbows on my desk, and I push my hands together while I'm holding the miniature. And typically, as you've seen in my stream, I try to when I'm streaming, I try to get my miniature up so that you can paint when I or so you can see me painting whenever I remember to do so. But typically you'll see me do that and then brace my hands against the table like this as well while I'm painting. It's just for extra stability, but we can we can manage like this, so. It's okay. No big deal. 
while I'm up here. And I'm just grabbing little bits of paint at a time because if you, I don't want to flood the area with paint. And for some of these areas, I'm actually just going to use our green, the commando green pier, and bring it up the highlights. So like on the back of his neck here, I just want to bring it back to that nice initial green tone and really let some of the other areas shine. So we're going to come back to that. And then there's a little vein along the side of his neck here. We're going to bring that back. Along the side, there's little wrinkles down here that I'm going to over flood with something, but it's actually fine. We're going to get along the nose with the same color. Under the chin. Alright. He has like an orange colored eye over here, so I'm going to go ahead and get that while I'm doing it. into our witch's brew mix that we made. We're going to go pick out some of these muscles on his arm. Our paint here is pretty thin so that I can pull it up to where I want the highlight to be. Sorry, I wanted some extra highlight above the eyes and on the tip of the nose. All right, bridges on his hands here. Need to mix up some more of that color. And just picking out highlights. He's got a bunch of scales on his hand, so we're gonna try to get those some color. Just dotting on some color and letting them naturally flow onto the scales. Same thing on the top of his shoulder. say thanks again for stopping by the stream where we're wrapping up this critical role orly i think is how he's pronounced miniature he's been a ton of fun to paint so far we're putting highlights on there hope you're enjoying your evening with me tonight feel free to comment in the chat and i will talk with you if you're here, if you're watching this on recording. Thanks for stopping on by. Glad to have you. Leave me a message in the comments if you're there. And if you hadn't, please feel free to like and subscribe. The channel it helps me out greatly. Let me know what kind of content you might want to see and I'll see if I can't snag some miniatures that fit with that. I'm pretty sure if it's Legion stuff, I probably have it.
So like I said, the blend we're using here is a 50-50 blend of Witch's Brew and Commando Green from Army Painter. All of the paints we've been using tonight are Army Painter paints. I really enjoy their paints. They, I feel like they're quality. Take a bit of shaking when you first get them, but once you get them going, they are they can't be beat for the price for one. Um, this guy's got a lot of little details on him, but it's making it fun to paint. Lots of little ridges and folds and things like that that you can do as much detail work as you want to on. Or as little detail work as you want to. However you want for your miniature to look satisfying to you. As always, I will try to list a complete listing of all the paint colors that I've used for this miniature in the comments or in the description of this video after the fact. They will all be Army Painter paints. Um, I won't necessarily put links to them. You could find all of them on the Army Painter website. Um, again, I'm not sponsored by them. I just like their product. So. I wish they'd sponsor me. That would be amazing. If you're going to Gen Con, let me know. You can shoot me a message here. You can post on my Facebook. If I have some time, I would love to meet up with some of my fans that like watching my paint dry, as one of my friends put it. I thought that was pretty funny, that people are literally coming here to watch paint dry. But you know what? You guys are awesome for doing so. All right, we're gonna go into some pure witches brew for some of these extreme highlights up here on top. Close to being done with the skin tones though, and then we will move on to the shell and a couple other areas, and we'll be done. Pick out some other extreme highlights here. Some of the toe ridges, some of the heel areas on the outside. Oh, I forgot to completely do the tail, so we'll get that in just a minute here. finish with this color, we'll have to come back and do it. If you're enjoying the stream, if you wouldn't care to, again, um, please share this with your friends. Let them know that there's this guy out there streaming stuff that you might be interested in. If, if you think they would enjoy it. I'm not asking you to spam people. But if you know people that would generally, genuinely probably enjoy this stream, feel free to send them my way. I would appreciate it. Alright. Here's where we're at so far. We are getting there. So I'm going to try to get while we're under here is this area on the shell underneath his chest. We're going to take our sulfur, sulfide ochre again. We're going to bring back some of that area back to that nice yellow tone. It's not going to take a whole lot to get it back there. But it does need to be thinned a little bit more. And we're going 
get some of these ridges back to the yellow color. We don't want to lose all that beautiful green that we mixed in with that yellow through the wash though. So be very, very um, conservative with this color. Some of those greens we want to stay. Not sure what that was. That was an interesting sound. Something on my paint desk decided to fall. That was fun. Alright. We're going to highlight up his eye patch real quick with some more of that leather brown that we had been using before. And we're just going to go with direct leather brown tried it whoops again flood the area with water to fix that had a little bit more a little bit too much water in my paint We're also going to highlight some of the sword leather with this. And there's a couple areas I want to take the highlights a little bit higher on this bag, so just make it a little bit brighter. Really give it some good contrast. Same thing over here. we're at. We have to do the shell and the tail. So tail, we're going to go into our witch's brew and green, commando green mix. Thin it down a little bit. And we're just going to nail the top of that tail with some of that mixture there. We don't want to get the bottom of it really. And then I'm going to blend in just right on the tip, just a little bit of a different color. And just let those, while it's still wet, pull up some of that darker color up towards the tip so it blends naturally. Easy peasy. And then we'll take some normal green and go down the little ridge on the underneath side. But not too far. Just blend it down a little bit. Just fixing an area where I saw a highlight that I missed. Or an opportunity to really bring some color up. Same thing on the face here. You really want to try to make the face pop because people will pay attention to that. Alright, so what we did for the gold on the um, bagpipes on his back is we mixed some gunmetal and some greedy gold. We need to highlight that up a little bit so what we're going to do is take our base tone of that and we're going to mix in just a little bit more greedy gold, thin it down some, and hit some of these higher areas with it. Not all of them. We want to leave some of those darker gold tones in there. Really to give it some depth of color. And 
then I'm going to take that color and I'm going to hit some of the edges along. Make it look like these are a little bit worn on the edge where the paint's maybe worn off some. If you get too much on there, you can take your thumb and rub it off a little bit. You don't have to be super neat with this. That's the cool thing about this, is you're just trying to make it look dirty in one. So. There. Same thing around the whole front edge of them. According to the people I've heard from, this guy's seen some stuff. So, I really want it to be. Um, really want it to be a different color. So The thing I'm contemplating is how I want to highlight the shell. Do I want to try to hand brush it or do I want to dry brush it? And it's probably going to be hand brushed. What we're going to do, we started with our dark stone. And we're going to go f pull out some of our dark stone. It looks like my camera stream has gone fuzzy. Let me try to get it back in. There we go. Sorry about that for the extended amount of time. I couldn't see it. And then we're going to bring in just a little bit of our skeleton bone and do a 50-50 blend of the dark stone and the skeleton bone. And kind of do some almost like light dry brushing. Not light dry brushing, just kind of some messy highlights right now. And we're going to bring these up even further. So this is just our first tone here. And it's a turtle shell, so if it doesn't look completely gorgeous just yet, I promise it will come along in a bit. We've got a couple more tones of this that we're going to do in a few. So again, this is Army Painter Skeleton Bone. Is it Skeleton Bone? Yeah, Skeleton Bone and Army Painter Dark Tone, or uh, Dark Stone. Dark Stone? Yep, Dark Stone, not Dark Tone. Dark Tone would be the wash, Dark Stone is the paint. Thanks for spending your Monday night with me. Hope your all's weeks are starting off swell. Mine's been a rough start to the week, but I'm on vacation next week, so I just gotta make it through Friday. And then my family's coming into town for a week. And then, I'll go back to work for a couple days, and then it's off to Gen Con. Hooray! Yay, Gen Con! I'm excited. It's my one convention I get to go to every year. Well, I say every year. I've been twice now. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull in some leather brown and mix it in with our um, tone and some more skeleton bone, probably in a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio now. And we're going to hit some more highlights on there. But these are need to be. This needs to be pretty thin. pull it up towards the top of each point. I don't like dry brushing effects myself, usually. Um, there's a time and place for them, I feel. I use them more frequently on vehicles. Um, it's just a personal opinion. I don't like the dusty look that it provides. But 
I have seen it done well, and sometimes it done well looks really good. So, you do what works for you. If you would rather dry brush this section of this miniature, feel free, I could understand. I'm going for more of a turtley look. And even if you see some lines going on here and there, that doesn't look bad on the turtle shell look. All right, then we're gonna pull in just a little bit more of the skeleton bone. And this is probably gonna be our highest tone that we're gonna go here. And really thin this one out pretty far. And we're just gonna hit the very tops here. And only the tops of each point. And kind of the edges around the corners of the shell. You do whatever technique works for you. This is how I do mine. And I'm very happy with how this guy's turning out, and I have a feeling the customer will be too. So. to bring up the highlights on this rope just a little bit. So I'm going to go into my pure, my matte white over here, mix in just a little bit of skeleton bone, really desaturate that color, and we're going to hit some of the tops of the rope real quick. Really bring it up a little bit more. Get some more white on there. really just stay up towards the top of the rope here. You don't want to go too far down. So these are just little dots. And I may go up a little bit further on the turtle shells. It's not quite as bright as I want it to be. So just another touch. We're probably about three to one skeleton bone to our leather brown mix with the dark stone. So it would be like three one to one, or no, maybe three to a half to a half. I'm not sure how to do that ratio. And I really wanna just push some of the very tip points up a little bit higher. So really thin paint here. Push up some of these tips of the shells a little bit more. Give it some more contrast. Again, you can do as much or as little of this as you want. Whatever you are happy with. Yep, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Just that amount of brightness. Alright, last thing is to retouch up some of this black, I'm not sure what happened here. But while that's drying, drying, there you have it, one completed Orly miniature. I will get a picture up onto the website for you to see, and I will change the thumbnail of this to the completed miniature. But that's going to wrap us wrap up the stream tonight. We finished the sky, and if you take out the breaks that we took, two hours from start to finish, again, miniature painting does not have to be long and intensive. As I'm speaking, I see a spot that I want to highlight some of the yellow back up a little bit more, but it does not have to be super long and intensive. Paint to what makes you happy, and I promise you, you'll enjoy anything that you finish because you did it so thanks for stopping on by that's going to be the end of tonight's stream i'm going to let the finish letting this base dry and then get them glued onto the base i'll shoot some pictures we'll get this the thumbnail changed 
so keep your eyes out for tomorrow night's stream, um, which more than likely Tuesdays is going to become my normal streaming night. Um, I'm sorry, probably Mondays is going to become my normal streaming night, but I'm doing it as often as possible right now. Um, but we'll see. I haven't decided yet. Pretty much whenever I stream right now is. But keep your eyes out for tomorrow night's stream. I will be streaming tomorrow night, and we're going to be painting some of those dungeon doggies that we've been talking about. We've got six more before we're done with that commission, and I'd like to get that one out the door by the end of the week. So thanks so much for stopping by. Have a good night, and as always, get out there and paint some more. Good night, everyone. <laughs>